Thank you for joining me for another Quick Hits Conversation. I'm Dr. Robin. With me today, I have Simon Coles, Lauren Schieffer, and Mario P. Fields. The question I want to ask, what is the difference between being optimistic and having expectations? Lauren, can you kick us off? The difference is profound. Expectations can be optimistic expectations mm. or pessimistic expectations. Expectations are what we believe into existence. Mm -hmm. Optimism is a discipline that the end of the road will turn out for our benefit, regardless of how we get them. Mm. For me, that's the difference. Okay. So for me, optimism implies a sort of surrender of outcome. If you see what I mean, I think you're probably optimistic about stuff you don't have control over. Whereas if you've got expectations, that doesn't for me, signify any degree of control or not. Um, I think expectations might be uh, something where you, the world should work this way, you know. Whereas optimism is kind of like, a, I'm, I'm, things always turn out all right. It's going to be sunny, sort of mm. issue. And of course, expectations can be negative, as Lauren said. Mm. I agree with both of you guys, and I've lived it. So I'm five foot two and a half and shrinking, and I was always hopeful. Right. I was positive, optimistic that I would at least get to five foot eight. Right. I was extremely hopeful. Then I looked at my parents and my mom was four, uh, five, one and dad was five, four. So I started to expect, OK, I'm hopeful to get five, eight. But I, I my belief system, right, my expectation is looking kind of at empirical data uh, without proof that maybe that won't happen. Uh, but for me, it's the the being optimistic of having that hopeful thought, right? Hopeful vision, and then expectation is kind of developing this belief system that hasn't been proven yet until the outcome either matches your expectation, or it does it, or it exceeds it. So that's how I kind of grown up with those two. So how does it work then? So I I don't know if you've all been given this advice. I know I have a lot in my life, which is well, don't have too much expectations or you're going to be disappointed. How do you have an optimistic outlook that things are going to be better without having expectations that are going to allow you to be disappointed? That was something that was just really occurring to me was as you grow as a human, you sort of you tend to uh, be told or, or get the idea that you shouldn't have expectations. You should sort of um, hold back. Otherwise, yeah, you're going to be disappointed or, or, or your fears and anxieties may not be realized. Mm hmm. Uh, but then also, as you get a little bit more settled in yourself, you might become more optimistic. So I guess one diff big difference is people should tell you not to have expectations, but then tell you to be optimistic about things. Yeah, or expect the worst, then you can be pleasantly yeah. surprised. <sighs> That's Thank another common. So how, yeah. how does that work? What are your thoughts? Simon, I, I think it comes perhaps later in our lives, but I started to study neuroplasticity and every organized religion that I have studied in my life, and I've studied um, quite a few of them before I made decisions for myself, um, this concept of what you think about, you bring about, mm -hmm. you will find in their sacred writings. It's in the Torah. It's in the Quran. It's in the writings of both the Sikhs and the Baha'i. Mm -hmm. uh, Proverbs uh, 23, 7. Uh, so as a man speaketh, so he is. So as a man thinketh, so he is. What you think about, you bring about. Mm -hmm. So when you start coming from that position, if you expect the worst, the worst will absolutely happen. So mm. expect the best instead, what you think about, you bring about. I really believe that. Mm. Now it's a discipline. It's absolutely a discipline. It's a discipline I fall short of um, more often than I care to admit, but I believe that that is a driving force in, in everything that I do. Mm. Yeah, I uh, agree. I mean, I look at it, it applied to business. I mean, when I had the imagination and the vision of building the corporation, and we'll just use a nonprofit, I noticed that when the days I had expectations that this concept or whatever I was trying to develop would fail, my behaviors followed. Mm. And I had to change my thought, which is a choice. And I had to change my thought process to say, here's a deal. It's a belief. It's not proven right through research, but expect the best. If the outcome of this business transaction or this vision does not meet or exceed your expectation, look at it as an opportunity to gain information and insights to make an informed decision for the next set of expectations. And I've developed that discipline and way of thinking four years ago, which looking back on the results, it has really helped me manage expectations, not allow the, the negative thought process to become a barrier mm -hmm. and, and to create new opportunities off of 
of expectations that maybe were not met, if that makes sense. I want to build on something there. So Lauren, you said, as you think you become basically, but Mario, you made a point and I, I need to call this out. You have to do the work. You can't just sit around thinking because then that's not going to happen. So I think part of being optimistic and having expectations is being willing to do the work, not sitting around on your couch, expecting money to fall through your roof. Yeah. The Colonel used to say, focus on the work kid and the results will come. Hmm. Sometimes I get bogged down in the work and then I can't see the results anymore. And I have to, the opportunity, the um, optimism, I have to go find it. For me, the best way to do that is to look at the progress. If you look at starting at point A to get to point Z, the optimism is very difficult. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what you do is you get from point A to point B mm -hmm. and then you celebrate and then you go from point B to point C because actually at that point, your point B is your point A. Mm -hmm. So then you go from point B, which is now your point A to point C and you celebrate. And before you know it, your point Y is your point A. Mm. So and I think part of it too is remembering look, when you're at point Y and it's your point A, remembering that all those other letters, because that's easy to do too, is forget where you came from. And you hear a lot of, you don't need a rearview mirror because you never look behind you. But I think if you never look behind you, it's hard to be optimistic because you don't realize how far you've come. Exactly. So is optimism a general thing, whereas expectations can get extremely specific? Optimism is a state of being. Mm. Yeah, I agree. What I like to do is not confuse them. Uh, the, they're separate. Mm -hmm. Where no matter what the situation is, you can always be hopeful and, and positive. It could be the worst. I mean, I, Dr. Rob, your podcast is, is an excellent example of the difference between being hopeful and, and expectations. And so I agree, Simon, that the thought process of no matter how bad it gets, you can still choose to be hopeful mm -hmm. and positive, but don't confuse optimism and expectation. They are totally different things. Yes. But can you be optimistic and hopeful if you expect horrible things to happen? Do they, I mean, that seems yes. like a really bad disconnect. Yes, because optimism is a mindset to some extent, whereas expectations are sort of the process of a reality unfolding. So you can, still can go, you know, I'm expecting this to go really, really badly. But on yes. the other hand, I'm optimistic about the future. And um, maybe I'm about to, um, you know, fall down and graze my knee, but... Uh, it won't be too bad and it'll heal in a week. That's a good point. So, you know, there's a country song that says, if you're going through hell, keep on going. You might get out before the devil knows you're there. Yeah. And that idea that it may be really bad and I can expect it to be really bad right now, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. That's not an oncoming train. Yeah. I think is the point that we're making is that. Yeah. that oh yeah. I like that. And si Simon well said, I'm, I, I, you know, and I'm talking to Colonel's daughter, Lauren, but uh, combat, you know, when, when you're in the military and combat situations, it's accurate, accurate statement, Simon. It's it's not a very positive environment, but you're so hopeful and optimistic together. So, yes, absolutely. You just remind me of those experiences. Thank you. And, and you know, as a as a business owner, I mean, we all I'm sure sure have spreadsheets that, that show when we're going to run out of cash, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> but, but we were optimistic that all of the sales activity we've been doing means the good things are going to happen and it'll be all right. Yeah. Uh, an, another uh, analogy for this, just to throw one more in there. Robin, <laughs> do you have kids? I have not given birth to children, but I've raised some siblings. Okay. Well, this is specifically about giving birth. So uh, no one here can specifically relate other than in a general way, but Every woman who, who goes into the, the ninth month knows that what's coming is really <laughs> painful. <laughs> and um, it is, there's no question about it. And, and I just love, and I use it in air quotes because I really hate stories of, about women that walk into the hospital and squat and, oh, there's a baby. Mm. Um, my first was 17 hours. My mm. son was 10 pounds, nine ounces and 23 inches long. And that was 21 hours, really painful. But when you head into it, you know that what you're going to have at the end is, is something beautiful. Mm. So you can face something that is going to be very, very difficult. And your expectations are, yeah, this is going to hurt a lot and still be optimistic about what's at the end.
What a great example and what a great place to end a 10 minute conversation. This has been fabulous. Thank you so much. I look forward to having a conversation with each of you again really soon.